Claudia will be doing, uh, making a presentation to us, the title of which is a discussion on homophobia and transphobia in a modern workplace. Her supporting faculty are Dr. Eva Jones, Dr. Andrea Levy, and Dr. Stephen Minkler, all from the Honors Program. And if you'll join me in welcoming Claudia. and this is homophobia and transphobia in a business environment. So um, as an introduction, I'll talk about who I am. So um, I'm the president of Middlesex Community College's Gay Straight Alliance SPEAK, which stands for Students Promoting Equality, Acceptance, and Knowledge. Um, we hold a lot of events on campus to promote awareness towards LGBT issues, and um, you know I've, I've held a few ally trainings myself where I've gone up in the same exact spot <laughs> and done presentations like this throughout the semester. I am a member of the second cohort of the uh, Middlesex Community College's Honors Group, as well as a few other members in the audience. <laughs> And um, I am a business administration major, which is why um, the issue of homophobia and transphobia is greatly important to me because human resources need to learn how to um, <coughs> kind of evolve to um, dealing with the issues that are occurring in today's society when involving lesbian and gay and transgender people. So defining the subject matter, LGBT is an acronym that stands for lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender. It's much simpler than saying all of those words. <laughs> you just say LGBT. Um, however, there are many letters that follow after um, that I will not be going into too much, but you can do your own research. Um, so throughout the presentation, I might say LGBT plus and switch from other acronyms. Um, homophobia has um, itself a little differing definitions of the word. A lot of people don't agree that it should be called a phobia because it might not necessarily be fear as much as discrimination. However, others do fear, uh, feel that it almost is a fear to some people, a fear of what's different from themselves or a fear of what's you know going to change. So. Homophobia is, you know, the discrimination against lesbian and gay in individuals or homosexual individuals. And transphobia is in regards to transgender and or transsexual people. So there are many problems that do arise for LGBT plus individuals. One of which being that while it has been federally legalized same-sex marriage, there are still no federal laws in place to protect people at work from uh, being fired or being discriminated against due to being in a same-sex marriage. Um, this picture itself um, shows the states that have laws in place to protect um, LGBT plus individuals with darker blue being um, same-sex marriage uh, people as well as um, different gender identity protections. However, uh, light blue is just sexual orientation protection and gray is none. The only thing that has changed since December 2014 is that Utah has gained protections. In over a year, only one state has stepped up to the task to creating these laws. 
And as you can see, the southern region has the least amount of protection. However, it has the highest density of LGBT individuals with 35% compared to other regions which have less. So you would think that they would be a little more on it <laughs> with gathering protection. Um, when it comes to homophobia in the work environment, you can see things such as termination, being fired from their position if they are outed by um, a coworker or um, anyone else. <laughs> and wage discrepancies tend to be the most common of discriminations within uh, work environments with uh, LGBT plus earnings in the uh, Midwest and mountain regions being under, <laughs> sorry, the, this sentence always gets me. So <laughs> under people who earn under 24,000 are 50% more likely to be falling under LGBT plus uh, labels, yes. <laughs> LGBT plus labels in the Midwest and mountain states. So, um, they fall into the poverty region more likely than non-LGBT individuals. In uh, work environments dealing with transphobia, you can see that 90% of transgendered individuals report being harassed or discriminated against while at work. And I mean, that's, that's just <laughs> unacceptable. Um, and due to that, 71% of <laughs> transgendered people hide their gender identity from their coworkers, from their employers, due to the fear that they would be discriminated or harassed or fired or their pay wage would go down. Then can you blame them when 90% say things bad have happened to them due to that? Other, you know, why, why do these problems matter? Other than, you know, very obviously. <laughs> So while, as a manager, you should care about this because if people do not feel comfortable working for you, then they're not going to do their very best job. And so you'll have a lower morale within your, co your employees. And with lower morale comes lower productivity. They're too worried about taking care of themselves and hiding who <coughs> they are to focus on what they're supposed to be doing at work. They might be afraid to talk to one of their coworkers to um, get help with a problem or to work together because of what a coworker might have said. And when you have lower productivity, you have lower profits. Not much is going on, so with less work comes less money. Um, and so this is becoming more of an issue because due to growing population of LGBT individuals and people coming out, more and more people are caring about this topic. If your uh, company is known to be not very friendly toward LGBT people, a lot of people will probably <laughs> not shop with you or partner with your company. As you can see with uh, North Carolina today, in, in politics, a lot of companies are pulling out of North Carolina and other states have stopped doing business with them due to their um, policies on transgendered individuals and the restroom policies, which <laughs> some of them are just getting ridiculous. <laughs> um, and so as said, customer loss, um, when you're working in a retail business and let's say one of your uh, cashiers treats an LGBT customer the wrong way. That customer is not going to come back and that customer will tell their friends not to go there. And eventually it just makes an impact. And so managers <laughs> should try to get at least um, a neutral stance within it, teach their uh, cashiers, their workers, how to be at least more tolerant of gender diverse and uh, LGBT individuals. So, what else needs to be done? <laughs> so, federal change. 28 states are still missing anti-discrimination laws, and that's, that's over half of the United States, over half of our country. 
are still uh, not protecting uh, LGBT individuals. As for um, making the steps to do that, what needs to happen is education. The more people come out and say, like, the more people come out and say that this needs to change and this is why. They hold these ally trainings, they hold presentations like this, and by word of mouth, people learn to become more tolerant through understanding, through education. And with that, everyone agrees that human rights are a topic that needs to be improved, that needs work still. And as ending words through a very wise professor on this campus, we're people first, it's as simple as that, whatever your beliefs are, we were all brought here equal to be equal. Patty Raymond. Q&A.